Good day, learners. Welcome to our science class. Today, we will go to study plant reproduction, particularly the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Tama. Katulad ng mga tao at mga hayop, ang mga halaman ay may kakayahan din na magparami. Papaano? Yan ngayon ang ating pag-uusapan. You can see different types of plants everywhere. They differ in size, shape, color, smell, and even in their mode of reproduction. Kung titignan natin ang ating kapaligiran, mapapansin natin ang iba't ibang uri ng mga halaman. Sila ay tinuturing na living things o isa sa mga bagay na may buhay. Magkakaiba sila sa laki, sa korte, kulay, amoy, pati na rin ang paraan ng kanilang pagpaparami. The object Objective of our lesson is to describe the sexual mode of reproduction in flowering plants. Bibigyan ko kayo ng idea kung paano ba dumadami ang mga halaman. They reproduce in two ways, sexually and asexually. Anong pagkakaiba ng dalawang ito? In sexual reproduction, it requires the joining of an egg cell and a sperm cell. Ang ibig sabihin, kinakailangan ng babae at lalaking halaman. It also form a seeds. In asexual reproduction, it does not require an egg cell and a sperm cell. Ang ibig sabihin, isang parent lang pwede nang maparami ang halaman. It is also without seeds. How do flowering plants reproduce? Paano ba nagpaparami ang mga halamang namumulaklak? Ano ba muna ang mga flowering plants? It is also called angiosperms. They have seeds that are enclosed in a container or case called ovary. These plants produce flowers. Ang mga halamang namumulaklak, meron silang mga buto kung saan nasa loob ito ng ovary. Ang mga flowering plants, ang distinct feature nito ay mga bulaklak. Flowers are the reproductive part structures of plants. Its function is to reproduce new plants. Napakahalaga ng mga bulaklak sapagat dito nanggagaling ang egg cell and sperm cell na kinakailangan para sa pagpaparami. What are the parts of a flower? Saan ba nanggagaling ang egg cell and sperm cell? So these are the parts of a flower. We have the petals, sepal, Stamen, which consists of filament and anther. We also have pistil, which consists of stigma, style, and ovary. Sa loob ng ovary, nandodon ng mga ovules. What are the function of each parts of a flower? Umpisahan natin sa petals. These are the most obvious part of a flower. They function for protection and attraction. Their bright colors and scent attract agents of pollination. Sa isang bulaklak, karaniwan na pinakamalaki at kapansin-pansin ay ang mga petal sapagkat iba-iba ang kulay nito, iba-iba rin ang amoy. Pero ang pinaka-function niya ay upang protektahan ang iba pa niyang parte. Ito rin ang nagsisilbing attraction o taga-attract sa mga agents of pollination o yung mga kinakailangan para sila ay Maparami. Sepals, these are modified leaves which enclose and protect the other parts of a flower when it is still a bud. When the flower blooms, the sepal supports the bottom of the flower. Kung papansin mo ang isang bubot o bata pang halaman na nakasarado pa ang mga petals nito, napapalibutan ito o nababalutan ito ng dahon o ng sepals. Kapag ka bumukadkad na o nag-bloom na ang mga petals, ang sepal ay napupunta sa pinakaibabang bahagi nito na tumatayo naman ngayong soporta. Pistil, the female reproductive part of a flower. It consists of stigma, style, and ovary. Stigma is the swollen tip of the pistil that receives the pollen grains. Style, it is a stalk that connects the stigma to the ovary, while the ovary is the enlarged basal portion of the pistil that houses the ovule. Sa pistil, nahati ito sa tatlong bahagi. Ang stigma, ito yung nagre-release ng sticky substance 
kung saan kapag ang pollen grains ay, ay nagland dito, ito ay maa-attach dito para hindi lipa rin. And then, ang style, magkoconnect lamang ito sa stigma and sa ovary. Ito rin na magsisilbing passageway para makarating sa ovary ang sperm cell. Ovary, on the other hand, nandito matatagpuan ang mga ovules kung saan nasa loob nito ang mga egg cells. Stamen, this is the male reproductive part of a flower. It consists of the filament and the anther. Filament is the stalk that holds the anther, while the anther is the pollen-producing organ of the flower. It consists of two lobes that contain pollen sacs. Ang filament tagadala ng anther. Ang anther na hati into two lobes kung saan nandoon sa loob nito ang mga pollen sacs na naglalaman ng mga pollen grains. Sa loob ng pollen grains, nandito ang mga sperm cells. Ngayon, alam niyo ng iba't ibang parts ng flower. Pag-usapan naman natin ng pollination and fertilization. Plants reproduce sexually through pollination. Ano ba ang pollination? It occurs when the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma. Paglilipat lamang ito ng pollen grain mula sa anther ng isang halaman papunta sa stigma. So mula sa lalaki na parte papunta sa babaeng parte ng isang bulaklak. There are two kinds of pollination, cell pollination and cross pollination. Cell pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or of a different flower that belongs to the same plant. Kung titignan natin ng lala larawan, nagpapakita ito ng cell pollination. Ang tawag sa ganitong klase ng bulaklak ay bisexual sapagkat nagtataglay ito ng parehong sexes, male and female. Ang anther, mapupunta siya doon sa stigma ng bulaklak na yon. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower that belongs to another flower of the same kind. Kung titignan natin yung nakikita natin, may dalawang bulaklak na magkauri. Mula sa isang bulaklak, manggagaling ang pollen grain at malilipat ito sa isa pang bulaklak na kauri nito. Sa cross-pollination, kinakailangan ng mga agents of pollination. Sila ang magdadala ng pollen grains papunta sa stigma ng isa pang bulaklak. Once a pollen grain enters the stigma, it swells and grows along tube that travels through the style until it reaches the ovary. The tube releases the sperm cells into the ovule to fertilize the egg cell. The fertilized egg cell and the ovule itself develops into a seed. The ovary then enlarges and thickens its walls to become a fruit. So ang pinakatanong, paano ba nangyayari ang fertilization sa isang flowering plants? Kung titignan natin yung nakikita natin, ito yung pinakapaliwanag. Ang pollen grain mula sa anther mapupunta sa stigma. Kung saan ang pollen grain maglalabas ito ng pollen tube na may lamang sperm cell. Pupunta ito sa may ovary, papasok sa ovules kung saan naroroon ang egg cell. So si sperm cell at saka si egg cell magyu-unite sila. Magkakaroon ng fertilized egg, madidevelop ngayon ang fertilized egg na yon o yung embryo. And then eventually, magiging seeds. And then ang ovary, it will mature and become a fruit. So sa loob ng fruit, nando doon ang seeds. Kaya kung papansin ninyo, pag kumakain tayo ng mga uh, prutas na merong buto, pwede nating itanim ang buto at magmumula doon ang panibago na namang halaman. Now, what are the agents of pollination o yung tumutulong para mapalipat ang mga pollen grains sa iba't ibang mga bulaklak? We have insects, wind, water, birds, and people. And these are the example of plants that reproduce sexually. We have apples, sunflower, and eggplants. 
napakarami pang mga halaman sa paligid natin ang nagre-reproduce sexually. Now, how well do you know sexual reproduction in plants? You have to identify the following questions. What do you call to the reproduction in plants that involves the fusion of male and female gametes common for flowering plants? The answer is sexual reproduction. What is the other term for flowering plants? The answer is angiosperms. What is the sexual reproduction? structure of a plant? The answer is flower. What do you call to the male reproductive part of a flower? The answer is stamen. What do you call to the female reproductive part of a flower? The answer is pistil. Last question, it refers to the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. What do you call to this process? The answer is pollination. So I hope you did learn from our lesson. Thank you for listening.